Hello, today we're going to preview math module three for first grade and it is on measurement. So it's a nice break after four months of working on addition subtraction strategies to really add that application piece and formalize students' definitions of what measurement is. I think one of the keys with measurement is it gives you a chance to give students those real life authentic experiences and build some real life background knowledge. Um, I know the module problem sets are slightly contrived. That doesn't mean our lessons need to be. Let's give kids the real duck every time we possibly can, especially in the data collection part. Um, so you might hear me speaking towards that as we go through. Uh, measure real life things, not things on paper. Um, both important to do, but give your kids the real duck as much as you can. So uh, module three, we're going to begin after President's Day. It's a 13 lesson module with an assessment and we have 14 instructional days blocked off. So if you're a lesson a day kind of person, this should work pretty good for you. The assessment should be about one day. Um, you might want to compress some pieces. Topic B and C are quite similar. Some new vocabulary for our students to check out. Um, in kindergarten, they definitely do comparing of less than, bigger than, taller than, longer than. Um, but you guys are really going to take that and expand it. Um, I think some of the important vocabulary to check out here for students is going to be the idea of an endpoint, you know, where the object starts and where the object begins, the idea of a length unit. You know, really using that unit vocabulary um, that we can measure in all sorts of units, but we want to work our way to a standard unit that everybody across the world knows a centimeter is a centimeter. Um, as you head into topic A, it really focuses on um, indirect comparison as opposed to putting two things next to each other. So you're going to use a third object, um, and that's really transitivity in math. If I know four is bigger than two, and two is bigger than one, four must be bigger than one. And that's really that same idea. Now what this module asks you to do with your students is to help develop an anchor chart to really go through the rules of what measuring is. And each lesson offers an opportunity to uh, ask a question and create answers as a result. To me, this would make a great closure to every lesson you have. Uh, our focus standard is about ordering three objects by length and being able to compare them using a third. So they do that in many different ways and you can look at these two problems. They're represented quite different. They're represented quite different, but you can see um, really using that, that third measurement piece that I'm comparing a path and a path using squares or I'm using these rectangular lines to compare bones. And as you can see through the module, this is kind of how it develops. It goes from pretty much straightforward, longer, shorter, to then using units to order things uh, based on size. Topic B introduces centimeter cubes, where you're going to be really working with a standard unit of length and really talk about why mathematicians and scientists like standard units of length. It allows them to communicate with other mathematicians and scientists to be able to come up with common findings. And so again, we can expand our anchor chart, asking a question at the end of every lesson, and really allowing us to have some time to really speak about precision and why that's so important, and why that's so important in their drawings, their unstructured drawings. Why draw a 10 frame versus an unstructured drawing? Precision. Um, I believe this problem at the bottom really illustrates this focus standard well. Um, looking at that you want the units to be the same size, no gaps, start at your end point. And really those are kind of the important things we want students to walk away with. There's another focus standard as uh, the modules fold back in our work with addition and subtraction constantly, especially through the lens of your application problems. And really what we're doing here is we are laying the groundwork for our students to understand tape diagrams in a very concrete way. The beauty of this module is the ability to go from that concrete to pictorial to abstract for kids. Uh, really knowing that those nine centimeter cubes are worth nine and the six uh, blue cubes are worth six, the actual numeral six. And this really allows you again to reinforce those skills you've been building in module one and two. And 
really doing some good modeling with them. We found in our second grade post test that 86% of students who chose to draw a tape diagram on a problem got it correct. And you guys are going to start them down that path. So when we look at how the problems develop, it develops from very straightforward measuring objects to now taking objects that we know the measurements, being able to order them, and then answer our how much longer questions. So really working on that vocabulary, modeling with concrete, modeling with students of different sizes, um, modeling with real life objects. Why should we measure a, a picture of a wrench when we could bring in a real men wrench and measure it? Topic C really helps to expand on the ideas of topic B and talk about using non-standard units and maybe why we can use them, but why we shouldn't. You know, really, this is the idea. It's easier to communicate when everyone is using the same unit lengths. Um, and it really is an interesting conversation that when you see something like this, the bigger the unit, the fewer you will need, which will cause kind of some confusion with kids but it's a great conversation working forward as they head into second grade where they're gonna compare centimeters to inches. It takes more centimeters, uh, but inches are a bigger unit. So that's a little bit uh, contradicting in itself. But again, this is gonna kind of round out your measurement chart. So you have eight really great essential questions to ask kids that should bring out eight really key concepts. You can kind of look. We're comparing measurements, and then in the end, you get to be able to come up with your own idea of really using that same for each, and sometimes it is more appropriate to use a bigger unit versus a smaller unit. This picture here is a great example of how measurement shouldn't work. Topic D is going to be a great topic for our students. It allows you to uh, take numbers and show them graphically. Um, really new definition of five groups called tallies and really kind of leading into quick tens for our kids almost in module four. Um, I think kids love this kind of stuff. And it's really about taking data and showing it in all sorts of different ways. But really what becomes important again in the module is their ability not just to collect data, to represent data, but to interpret data. Um, how many more students? Uh, how would I make these things equal? So your ability to look at a set of data and do something with it is something we really want our scientists to be able to do. Um, in speaking with our high school uh, science coordinator, something that they really struggle with, to look at a table and create conclusions. So give them rich opportunities to do that and give it to kids in the lens of real life stuff. Um, you can take a survey on anything, make it interesting. Um, and you can kind of see the development here. What's interesting about this is the different ways we show here. Our bars are going vertically stacked. Here our bars are going vertically down. And you can kind of look, this is where they're going to in third grade with bar data. And now they're representing it horizontally and scaled. So you guys really are sending them on that path to be able to handle and think about a question like this, that I'm looking at units that are iterated and that represent a number. Um, so you guys are starting them on their path to understanding higher levels of graphing be a great place to fold in some signs. I mean, as you look, really the fluency in module three is so important. It's three weeks. We don't want to walk away from all the work we've laid in with addition and subtraction. So really continuing counting uh, in the say 10 way will really give them a nice background heading into module four, using hide zero cards to add by place value, um, speed writing and roll and race addition to 20, really keeping those fluencies tight. And of course, this comes with sprints. So fluency, fluency, fluency. We don't want to take any steps back from where we've gotten to. And in fact, what you're doing right now is using concrete to reinforce all those things you've more abstractly learned about addition and subtraction. You're just going to learn it through the lens of measurement. So it'll be a great opportunity for our kids. Um, good luck in the module. Feel free to share this with parents if you'd like.